All right, let me play devil's advocate. What if I were an injured worker and you said to me, do you want more function or less pain? I might say to you, right now I want less pain. I'll, I'll deal with the function later on. What would you say? Well, the truth of it is that you can't have it that way because if you want to hurt less, which means you don't want to do anything, then that allows a deterioration of soft tissue function. And that isn't uh, going to help you at all. And everybody is aware of somebody who's been off work for years and they never do get back to work. And that's not a goal which the injured worker at the beginning wants to accept. Uh, certainly the injured worker at the beginning wants to get back to work, needs to get back to work. It's a, it's a financial thing. All of us need our, our pay and the commitments that are made. And so getting back to work is a reasonable goal from everybody's standpoint. Let's talk about evaluating function. I understand you're a strong believer in quantification. Will you tell us why it's important and how we ought to do it? This quantification of function uh, supplies the most efficient uh, handle, if you will, on getting the worker and getting the individual back to normal function. If we say function, that is something we can measure. If we say pain, we can't measure it. Uh, so if we focus at function, and this means strength, uh, endurance, uh, power, work, uh, range, these are all things which are measurable. If we focus at that, then it gives feedback to the individual how well they're performing. Back to the athletic mode. Uh, all the athletes measure their function in something. How far they can jump, how far much they can push, how fast they can run, and they measure their reactivation process, their training in terms of numbers, and transferring that back to the industrial athlete, measuring the numbers of performance, and then feeding back to that injured per person how they're doing is an easy way to get them to do more, get them want to do more, which is even the most important aspect. Probably especially if that person is still in pain and is not feeling the pain lessening, but you can show the person that there's actual progress being made nonetheless. Absolutely right. That's the key to it because uh, our nervous system doesn't give up on the pain right away and the pain will linger as kind of a safety valve for us. But as we're performing more, it's clear that improvement is occurring, and that's a justification to keep on going. And uh, again, this is easily understood by everybody involved, the therapist, the physician, and especially the injured worker. How do you, as a physician, help the team to keep a strong vocational focus to all of this activity, and not, for instance, do a range of motion for its own sake? Well. The injured worker, uh, first of all, is displayed as, as a professional professional lifter, if you will, if that's the job the uh, individual is doing. And uh, getting back to work activity is the goal. And so everybody talks about, well, what are you going to do? What, how, what sort of job do you have? Uh, what do you have to do? And as long as we're focused at that, uh, and not that we're doing this for some silly reason just to demonstrate that you have these ranges. Uh, again, focus at returning to work is easily understood by the injured worker and he recognizes that that's why we're doing all this, to getting back to work. Mm -hmm. okay. The old phrase, uh, which is so current in, now even, of take it easy is wrong. And uh, we know this from uh, much scientific evidence, but I suppose the best way to demonstrate that is what we've learned from space travel. That uh, when people are in space, gravity allows our soft tissues to, quote, take it easy. And that's an adverse event because the folks who first came back from space travel could barely stand up because the absence of the stresses of gravity was a, a destructive force for them. Now the individuals when they're in space vigorously exercise on a routine manner just to stay even. Uh, and that's an important aspect we all have to recognize that physical stress is a positive event to soft tissues and uh, taking it easy is a negative event. What happened was the very first day of school, I herniated a disc in my back and suffered a severe pain, severe injury, and was referred to the PAR Center. Can you remember back when you came into the PAR Center, what kind of shape were you in? 
I barely walked into the PAR Center door. I had to be assisted. Um, I walked very slowly, hunched over, in great deal of pain. I started the program very slowly. I could not at first do many of the exercises or many of the activities. And over the weeks, I became very mobile, very agile, and I'm back to work now. Good. How long were you in the program? I continue in the program on maintenance. I was actively in the program for three months. Mm -hmm. I was back to work at the end of two months. I returned to work on a part-time basis and have just now finished the semester and will return next semester on my normal contract. Very often people with uh, pain problems like you had have a real difficult time being active. How did you find activity with your pain? For me, the physical activities were wonderful. And in fact, very early in the program, I had a series of very difficult days. And the third day was to be a day at the PAR Center. And I called to say I would not be coming in and was told that, in fact, that those were the days that I was most to come, that it was very important for me when I was in great pain to get there. So I managed to get there and walked out in much less pain than I arrived. Wonderful. And I found that to be a consistent pattern, that I entered the PAR program with tremendous pain. And over the weeks, my pain has decreased to the point now where I'm often pain-free. Are you handling everything at home? Yes. The only difference is I find that I have less stamina than I used to. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm building that up again as well. Was surgery an option? Surgery was offered as an option, and it was suggested that I do instead the PAR Center mm -hmm. and the McKenzie program and the exercises with mm -hmm. the idea that if it was not successful, that I would have to reconsider surgery. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you that a number of people during the course of this, when I was in such bad shape, would say to me, oh, I had surgery, and I think you should have surgery, and why are you doing this alternative route? Now, when I talk with them and they found, find out how good I am, and that after their surgery, they still have some symptoms, and I'm nearly symptom-free. Um, they have a change of tune. <laughs>